Howdy gamers, Indiana John here, and today we're talking about Gen Con 2016. And uh, as of the recording of this video, it's only four days away, and I am super excited about it. Uh, I love the fact that I live in the Indianapolis area, and that every year, thousands upon thousands of gamers come and descend upon Indianapolis, and it's just a great geeky time for four days here in Indy. Um, what I wanted to do in this video is what I guess a lot of other uh, board game media producers have done and give you a sort of a top five, top six, I'm going to go top six, a uh, list of games that I'm looking forward to playing and trying and or buying at um, uh, Gen Con this year. And so we're going to start off by giving you this top six and then after that I'll talk to you a little bit more about my thoughts on Gen Con in general. So uh, without further ado, let's take a look at the top six. My number six game that I'm looking forward to at Gen Con is a new game by Jeff Engelstein, who I've had the pleasure of getting to know a little bit through board game media and, and podcasting and things like that. And it's also by his uh, son and daughter, Brian and Sydney, and that is the Dragon and Flagon. It's going to be produced by Stronghold Games. Now, uh, several years ago at Origins, I think it was like 2008, 2009, something like that, I sat down with Jeff and with his, his son Brian, and he taught me a game uh, called Swashbuckler, which was an old game from like, I think the 70s or 80s, something like that, that was in like a, a LP record album. And most people don't even know, know what that is anymore, but like a big box like this, and it had all these little paper pieces, and, um, and you were, it, was, it was a bar fight that you would have to write down your moves, sort of in a program movement robo rally sort of a way and then you moved around and you you slashed at each other and you threw things and you waved your hat at people and and it was a terrific amount of fun and Jeff seemed very enamored with it and so um, we played that and and I hadn't really talked to him much about it uh, after that and so when I heard that this game was coming out it got I got really excited about it because uh, I knew that he had decided to take that uh, design or that idea and implement it in a new way and it looks really really cool three-dimensional pieces uh, cardboard pieces and a kind of a streamlined system of, of rules and it just looks like it's going to be a, a hoot and a holler so I'm really looking forward to trying out Dragon and Flagon, my number six. My number five game that I'm looking forward to at Gen Con is actually one that I pre-ordered and will be picking up at the con. Uh, I saw it being played at Origins, uh, but I didn't get a chance to play it myself, but I've watched a few videos on it since then, and that is The Networks, designed by Gil Hova. And this is a game about running a television network, and it's, uh, you know, you're putting cards that represent different shows into uh, slots on your schedule, you're buying advertising, you're trying to recruit and hire actors, and it just looks like a great, great game with a cool uh, thematic artwork and just a, a cool theme in general that I've, I've never seen implemented into a game. And I just think it's going to be a lot of fun. I've, a lot of folks that I respect in the industry have played it and really, really enjoyed it, and so I'm looking forward to getting my own copy and getting it to the the table, and that is The Networks. My number four game that I'm looking forward to at Gen Con 2016 is a trivia game, which I know a lot of gamers don't like trivia games. Um, I've always had a soft spot in my heart for Trivial Pursuit. It's one of the first games that I played as a kid, um, and I just have always enjoyed trivia. Um, and this is a game that used to be a called Fauna, and then was changed to Terra and re-implemented, and now the newest version is called America. And this is originally designed by Freedom on Freeze and co-designed, in this case, by Ted Alsbach, produced by Bezier Games. Uh, this is a game with all kinds of questions about American culture and American history and American stuff, and you're going to be placing cubes onto this board, which is a map of the United States, with also some tracks and other things on it, and you're placing your cubes on the board, making your guesses to these uh, trivia questions, and you'll get points for being... Uh, uh, correct and also for being close and so I, I think it looks a, like a lot of fun and of course as an American I, I, I think it'll be a, an interesting uh, game to play with my friends and so I'm very much looking forward to it and um, very likely that I'll pick up a copy of this one and that is America. My number three game is set in one of my favorite fictional universes, and that is Star Trek. Um, and the big battle between Star Wars and Star Trek, I've always really fallen on the Star Trek side myself. I, I love sort of the optimistic, uh, kind of idealistic view of the future that Star Trek has. I love the exploration. Uh, I used to own the Star Trek Next Generation technical manual, and I poured over it and all the details of the ships. So I just love Star Trek. And so I'm talking about Star Trek Ascendancy by 
by Gale Force 9. And this is supposed to be a big epic sort of space exploration. I don't know if it's 4X or not, but it might be something like that. Um, game where you take on the role of one of the races uh, or cultures in the Star Trek universe. So the Cardassians and the Ferengi and the Romulans and that kind of stuff. And it looks like a big epic production. And I don't know a whole lot about it, but I'm really excited to try it. I think it's going to be one of those games that people are rushing into the dealer hall to buy. Uh, so I don't think I'm going to pick it up at the con, but I definitely want to get to a demo table and try it out because this could be the big epic Star Trek game that I'm looking for. So that is Star Trek Ascendancy. So one of my most favorite publishers when it comes to Gen Con is Fantasy Flight Games. And I have great stories over the years of the Fantasy Flight booth and all the stuff that uh, was there and was were surprises. I remember the year that Battlestar Galactica came out and no one thought it was going to be at the show and there were stacks of them there when you walked in the dealer hall and it was just very, very exciting. So you never know what Fantasy Flight is going to pull out for Gen Con. And this year, ahead of the, um, the con, they've made several announcements and the one that I'm most excited about is my number two game and that is Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition. Now, I used to own the original Mansions of Madness, which is a Call of Cthulhu themed game that's set in a house where you're exploring around and sort of solving a mystery uh, while all the time trying to avoid all of the uh, Lovecraftian beasties that are uh, walking around. And one of the uh, downsides of the game is that you had one player who was considered the keeper, who, or the dungeon master, if you will, who had to set up things in a particular way. Setup was a real long process and kind of a pain, and if you messed it up wrong and got a card out of order, it could really kind of screw the whole game up. And so what they've done in the second edition is that they've replaced that, where now it's a fully cooperative game. There is no keeper. The keeper is actually maintained by a digital app that uh, will be on your iPad or other tablet or, or phone or whatever. So um, I'm really excited to see how that's going to be implemented. Um, they said that you have, if you have the old version, you can upgrade with a con conversion kit. Um, and so I'm kind of sorry that I've traded away my old copy, but uh, I want to get a demo of this in. It's going to be for sale at the show. Um, again, I don't think I'll pick it up unless it just completely wows me, but um, but I'm really excited to try it out and to see uh, how they were able to improve upon that original design. So that's my number two, Mansions of Madness, second edition. So now it's time for my number one game I'm looking forward to at Gen Con 2016. And it's one that I haven't seen at the top of really anybody's list, but I'm just super stoked about it and I hope it doesn't end up being a disappointment. And that is Legendary Encounters, the Firefly deck building game. Now, uh, I used to play the original Legendary Marvel deck building game, and then they came out with these Legendary Encounters games for Aliens and Predator. And those uh, themes didn't really interest me at all, so I didn't play them. But a lot of my friends who did play them say that it, said that it was a great implementation um, and a great cooperative experience where you really felt like you were playing out the story of these movies and, and this world. So I'm really hoping that the Firefly game is going to be like that, because it's one of my favorite universes and my favorite uh, television shows of all time. I was really sad when they canceled it back in the day. And so I'm really looking forward to see what this game is going to have to offer. It looks like it has um, original artwork on it, so the cards are going to be really, really cool. And I'm hoping that the gameplay matches it too. So I really want to get a demo in of this, and if it's any good at all, I'm, d I'm certainly going to pick it up. So that's my number one game I'm looking forward to at Gen Con 2016, Legendary Encounters Firefly. So there's my top six games that I'm looking forward to at Gen Con 2016. And uh, I sure hope to see many of you at the show. It's going to be a really great time. Uh, if you happen to see me, please come up and say hi. Uh, maybe we can even get a game in together. That's a possibility. Um, I would definitely like to hear what you are finding to be interesting and exciting at Gen Con this year. Uh, as you've been looking through the, all the lists and everything for Gen Con, you know, what's interesting to you? Please uh, let me know in the comments or uh, let me know what things aren't interesting to you. And um, I just wanted to say that uh, if you've never been to Gen Con, I would highly recommend making it a game gaming destination for you because I think it's something that every gamer should experience at least once. I have the uh, luxury of having it in my backyard so I go every year. Uh, I'm able to kind of come home and sleep in my own bed every night so that's really nice but um, if you've never had a chance to come to a big convention like Gen Con I would, I would recommend it. I think it's the big show of gaming in the United States and it's something you should uh, really check out. If, uh, if you like board games, role-playing games, card games, uh, if you like cosplay, anime, 
Uh, even some video game stuff, there's not, not a whole lot of that, but uh, there's a good uh, bit of that as well. So there's just a whole lot going on at Gen Con. There's always something to do. It's four straight days of nonstop excitement. And the best part is the people. And the more you come to Gen Con, the more you start to see the same people that come into town, and it becomes less about the games that you're playing and more about the relationships that you're forming with other people. And that's what I, that's the reason why I'm a gamer, really, is it's not so much just pushing pieces around or looking at pretty artwork on cards. It's the relationships that you build with other people and the friendships that you make around a table. So um, I hope you're able to make it down to Gen Con at some point. Uh, definitely uh, check out uh, my videos as I uh, finish up Gen Con. I'm going to be making videos of the uh, different games that I've uh, enjoyed there. Maybe some vlogs and things like that. So hopefully you'll see a lot more stuff coming from me in the near future. But until next time, uh, thanks for watching and game on.